What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler, and we are now three NFL games away to crowning a champion of the NFL in the NFL's 100th season in Super Bowl 54. That is right. We have reached championship weekend. In this video, I'm going to preview both the NFC and AFC championship games, and then, of course, give my prediction who will be meeting up in Miami at the Super Bowl. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Looking first at the AFC Championship, you got the Tennessee Titans and the Kansas City Chiefs. My predictions for the divisional round did not go well at all. I had Baltimore and Houston winning. Great game by both the Titans and the Chiefs. This is a rematch of a game from Week 10. Tennessee won that one 35-32. In that game, Patrick Mahomes threw for 446 yards and three touchdowns in his first game back from his knee injury. The KC running game couldn't get anything going, however. For Tennessee in that one, both passing and rushing games thrived as Ryan Tannehill threw for 181 yards and two touchdowns, and Derrick Henry himself rushed for 188 yards and two touchdowns. If Tennessee wants to win this game, well, first off, regardless of what happens in this one, they've had a remarkable season starting 2-4, and four, and then Ryan Tannehill taking over at starting quarterback, winning seven out of the team's final 10 games to earn the final spot in the AFC playoff picture, upsetting the New England Patriots on the road and the number one seed, Baltimore Ravens. It's been a remarkable year. Tennessee's bread and butter all year, if I haven't said it enough, has been running the football. Derrick Henry was my number five running back on my top ten running backs list. If you watched that video, highly recommend. Henry led the league in rushing. In the postseason, he has not missed a beat. He has only found the end zone once, but he has rushed for 377 yards, 182 versus New England, and 197 last week against Baltimore, the sixth and fifth run defenses respectively in the NFL during the regular season. And Henry became the first player ever to rush for 180 yards in three straight games. Just phenomenal stretch he's on. And Henry might have another opportunity to have a really big game because Kansas City's run defense allowed the seventh most rushing yards per game on average during the regular season, averaging 128.2 rushing yards per game allowed. Against Houston, however, Kansas City did only allow 94 rushing yards, but the Houston running game is no comparison to Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is just a straight-up beast. I said that if if Tennessee wanted to win against Baltimore, Ryan Tannehill had to be better. I guess I was wrong, because Tannehill only completed 7 of 14 passes for 88 yards and 2 touchdowns. They can just ride Derrick Henry and the strength of of their defense, but I don't think they need to rely on their passing game so much against Kansas City, given what they've done so far in their last two games. Where the Titans will be tested the most is in their passing game, is in their uh, passing defense, excuse me. Tennessee's pass defense was for the most part, in the bottom half of the NFL for the entirety of this season. And I think, given how high-powered KC passing attack is with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, etc., it's going to be a long day for the Titans if if Mahomes and Co. can really sling the ball around, put up big numbers on the passing game. Because if Mahomes and Kansas City run up the score throwing the ball, it's going to be very, very difficult for Tennessee to run the ball as it, that chews up clock. And there won't be a lot of time if they're taking 10-minute possessions, running the ball, and Kansas City is going touchdown, to touchdown, to touchdown. It's going to be too much from the handle. If Tennessee is able to control the time of possession battle with their run game, I think they have a great chance of winning. For Kansas City, after going down 24-0 to against Houston, I turned off that game. Houston put kicked the field goal in the uh, to start the second quarter. And I turned off the game, like, all right, this game's over. I'm right. Finally. Woohoo. And then Kansas City finished the game on a 51 to 7 run in the final 37 minutes or so of action. It was just a phenomenal performance. The key for Kansas City is to stop Derrick Henry. If they can limit his production, they will win this game because they showed against Houston they have they're solid enough defensively to win games. Patrick Mahomes threw for 321 yards and five touchdowns against Houston. 134 yards and three of those touchdowns went to Travis Kelsey. I think those two can really make it a long day for Tennessee, like I said, because as the Titans' defense is at the bottom half of the NFL, or was so for the majority of the regular season. And I think Mahomes is not going to put up this kind of performance because this was a phenomenal performance, but he should, he needs to perform somewhat similar to the level that he did. He might need to have a 300 yard passing game and at least three touchdowns if tennis, uh, Kansas City wants to win. I don't think this will be a high-scoring affair. It is going to come down to who can win the time of possession battle. If KC can keep their defense off the field for as much as possible, they will get to the Super Bowl. 
And after last year's crushing defeat at home in the AFC Championship in overtime to the Patriots, I think this team, both players and coaches and fans, are hungry to win out, to win this game and make it back to the Super Bowl because they should have been in the Super Bowl last year. In the end, I do think Kansas City wins. They are at home. They have experience in these games. And I think the run defense for KC will hold up better than the pass defense of Tennessee. I have the final score being 30-14 to 14, Kansas City. In the NFC Championship, you have the Green Bay Packers and the San Francisco 49ers. The NFC was a little kinder to me in the divisional round as I predicted the top two seeds in the conference would square off in San Francisco for the NFC title. This game will be played after the AFC Championship game on Sunday, January 12th at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. And this is a rematch of Week 12 where the Packers coming off their bye traveled to San Francisco and got demolished by the Niners 37-8. to If Green Bay doesn't want to they don't want to repeat performance of week 12 if they want to change what happened they need to do three things first keep Aaron Rodgers upright the 49ers defensive front had their way with the Packers O-line sacking Rodgers five times and they have been phenomenal all season long two Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones need to show up in week 12 Rodgers threw for only 104 yards and a touchdown Jones received 13 carries for 38 yards and he wasn't even the team's leading rusher as Jamal Williams was with 45 yards Rodgers is a future Hall of Famer, and Jones just had the best season of his career, and the 49ers defense averaged 124.2 rushing yards allowed per game during the regular season. The Packers need these two guys to step up to have any chance of winning this game. And number three, they need to contain George Kittle. The Packers run defense held up nicely against San Francisco in Week 12. The issue was that Kittle went off, getting six catches for 129 yards and a touchdown. Against Seattle, the Packers pass defense got beat by Tyler Lockett, who had nine catches for 136 yards and a score. Kevin King, Jair Alexander, and company need to play their best collective game of the season to have any chance to return to the Super Bowl for the first time since 2010 when they won it all. Because the pass, the pass rush has been pretty solid so far. They were really good against Seattle. Jair and Preston Smith on the outside, the core in the middle. I think they played well. The secondary just needs to step up for Green Bay to have any shot at winning it, this game because they're going to be they are the underdogs. They're on the road. They got thrashed in San Francisco the last time they played there. And I think Aaron Rodgers, he for his legacy, making it to the Super Bowl and then winning it, that will cement him as one of the best quarterbacks ever because he's had the regular season success. He's got two MVPs, all the yards, all the touchdowns, but he's only got one Super Bowl and he hasn't really delivered in the playoffs as some people might think he probably should. For San Francisco, they took care of business at home against Minnesota, winning 27-10. to In that game, it was their defense once again that carried them. They sat Kirk Cousins six times, held Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen to a combined seven catches on 12 targets for 107 yards and a touchdown. And it was really the running game that thrived for San Francisco. Tevin Coleman carried the ball 22 times for 105 yards and two touchdowns. If they want to win, they just need to play it to their strengths. Get pressure on the quarterback and have the offense make a couple of plays to seal the game. If the 49ers held Minnesota to only seven first downs for the entirety of their divisional round matchup. If they can do the same against Green Bay, there is no way in my mind that they lose. Do I think that they're going to be able to hold the Packers to seven first downs? No. This Packers offense is far better, in my opinion, than the uh, Minnesota offense. But... I think they just got to play really strong. Because also, the run defense for San Francisco was phenomenal. They held Dalvin Cook to, I think it was like 18 yards for the entire game. Dalvin Cook, he was in the MVP conversation for the majority of, the, for a portion of the year. He was up there as one of the best running backs in the entire league. So this he was my number four running back in the NFL in my running previews list, uh, top 10 list. Which again, watch that video. Great choice. All they need to do is just make things difficult for Aaron Rodgers because when he is flustered, the Packers are a completely different team. The X factor, in my opinion, for the 49ers is going to be Richard Sherman. Sherman, after tearing his Achilles back in 2017, he is now, I think, fully recovered. He's playing the best football he has in the last two seasons. And I think he's going to be responsible for covering Devontae Adams probably the entire game. And he played really well against Minnesota and honestly really well this entire season, in my opinion. I think Sherman, if he can neutralize Devontae Adams, I think the Packers are going to have a long day because they really don't have many options in the passing game outside of Adams. Ultimately, I had the 49ers winning this one. I think their defense is just way too good to lose.
and the Packers don't have enough to stop all the firepower that the San Francisco defense has. Niners win by a score of 24 to 10 and go to the Super Bowl for the first time since 2013. So, to recap, my prediction for Super Bowl 54, San Francisco 49ers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs in Miami for the Super Bowl. Chiefs, they haven't made the play to the Super Bowl in a long, long time. Niners looking to return to the Super Bowl for the first time since 2013. Tell me your predictions down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you so much for watching.